Shalom, shalom, Israel, and welcome back to the Daughters of Zion channel. I'm Ashley. And I'm Crystal. And it is a blessing to be back before you guys, and we hope that you are well. All praises, all glory, and all honor to the Most High Yah. All right, guys, we are back with another video. This video is going to be entitled, The Wilderness, A Place of Safety and Purging for Israel. All right, guys, let's get right into it. If you want to go ahead and grab your pens, your papers, your highlighters, uh, your notebooks, and whatever you use to take notes, and most importantly, grab your sword. And we'll get right into the lesson. All right. Okay, the first scripture will be coming from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 21 through 28. Okay, this is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verse 21 through 28. And the Bible reads, And say unto them, Thus saith the Most High, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whither they be gone, and will gather them on every side, and bring them into their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king to them all. And they shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms any more at all. Neither shall they defile themselves any more with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. But I will save them out of all their dwelling places wherein they have sinned, and will cleanse them. So shall they be my people, and I will be their power. And David, my servant, shall be king over them, and they all shall have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt, and they shall dwell therein, even they, and their children, and their children's children forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. And I will place them and multiply them, and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. My tabernacle also shall be with them. Yea, I will be their Yah, and they shall be my people. And the heathen shall know that I am the Most High. Do sanctify Israel, when my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this is the will of the Father for his people Israel. It says, for the Most High says, I am gathering the people of Israel from among the nations and bringing them home from around the world to their own land to unify them into one nation. One king shall be king of them all. No longer shall they be divided into two nations. Okay, so this is the will for the father concerning his people. Um, we know that we have been sent into exile. We've been sent into captivity, into bondage because of our sins, because of the broken covenant against the Most High God. So we are experiencing our captivity. We are experiencing the repercussions of a broken covenant. But the Most High declares that there is going to be a time where this captivity will end for his people and once this time of captivity has ended for his people he will regather us from the places he has sent us and he will bring us together and unify us as one nation under the one true God the God of Israel the God of creation and the nation of Israel will no longer be divided into two nations the north which were the ten tribes that went to Assyria captivity and then you know Judah and Benjamin and Levi who dwelt in Jerusalem they were exiled and scattered across the nations as well so there would no longer be a gap or a separation between the tribes of Israel but the father will bring us all together as one nation under one God one righteous God with one righteous king which is the son of God the Messiah Yasha okay so this is the will and the plans that the father has for his people and we are at the point where our captivity is ending and we are leaving the places we have been scattered to go back to be gathered to the wilderness to become that one nation under the most high god okay so we're going to go through a couple of scriptures to let us know why we're leaving america why we're leaving the places that we have been scattered and this is one of those scriptures we have to understand that even though we've been here since birth this is not our home israel 
this is a place we were sent to because of punishment of sin. And this place that we've been scattered is not permanent, it's temporary. So the Father is letting us know through his plans that we have come to the end of our captivity and we're about to leave and be regathered unto him, okay? This is the timeline, this is the will of the Father. So it's important that Israel know who they are and understand the events that are about to take place so we're not confused or scared to leave the only place we've known all our lives. It's going to be okay, Israel. We're going to a better place. We're going to get back everything that we have lost because of our disobedience. And um, this is a time for Israel to rejoice, okay? But we have to first know who we are. We have to know where we are in order to know where we're going. This is not our home. We're about to be regathered under the Most High's wings. And we will be meeting in a place, the wilderness of the people, okay? So that's very important because I know some people out there think America is a permanent place, that this is this is it for us. But it's not. This is not our home. This is not the land that the Father promised his people, okay? So let's go to Ezekiel 39, 22 through 29. This is the book of Ezekiel chapter 39, 22 through 29. So the house of Israel shall know that I am the Most High, their Allah I am, from the day, from that day and forward. And the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity, because they trespassed against me. Therefore hid I my face from them, and gave them into the hand of their enemies. So fell they all by the sword. According to their uncleanness and according to their transgressions have I done unto them, and hid my face from them. Therefore, thus saith the Most High Allah I am, Now will I bring again the captivity of Jacob, and have mercy upon the whole house of Israel, and will be jealous for my holy name. After that they have borne their shame, and all their, tra and all their trespasses, forgive me, whereby they have trespassed against me, when they dwelt safely in their land, and none made them afraid. When I have brought them again from the people and gathered them out of their enemies' land and am sanctified in them in the sight of many nations, then shall they know that I am the Allah I am their Yah, which caused them to be led into captivity among the heathen. But I have gathered them unto their own land and have left none of them any more there. Neither will I hide my face any more from them, for I have poured out my spirit upon the house of Israel, saith the Most High Yah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So once again, this is just another witness, even though it's still Ezekiel, it's another uh, scripture to let us know why exactly why we've been exiled from our home. The Father doesn't hide anything from his people. He lets us know exactly what's going on. We made a covenant with the Most High. We agreed to keep his laws and his commandments. At some point, we broke the covenant. We turned from the glory of God to worship idols and to follow the ways of the heathen. Um, the Father was not pleased. And according to the broken contract, we had to reap the consequences. So our consequences, according to our sin, according to our vileness, was slavery captivity so the father saw that fit for us as our punishment but now the father is also declaring that your time of punishment is up i'm a man of my word i keep my promises i'm coming to get my people from the places that i have scattered them and i'm bringing them back into a place of the people the place of the wilderness before we enter back into israel which is the promised land that was given to our forefathers okay so the father is also declaring that if you are alive and remain at that time, if you are an Israelite, that you will be brought out of the places which you have been scattered. He makes a decree that he will leave none of his people among the nations. Okay, that is the father's plans. And he does this because he says, I will vindicate my holiness before the nations then my people will know I am the Most High, their God, responsible for sending them away to exile and responsible for bringing them home. I will leave none of them remaining among the nations, and I will never hide my face from them again, for I will pour out my spirit upon them, says the Most High God. So the Father is making a declaration. I'm bringing you all out, no matter where you are, if you are my people, by the blood if you are israelite you're coming out of the places of captivity 
our exodus is not based on faith. It is based on a promise that the Father cannot break. So this is why he's saying, I'm bringing you all out. No matter the condition of your faith, if you are Israelite who is alive and remains at the time of the exodus, be prepared to leave. This is why he's bringing this information out so that when the time comes to leave, you're not trying to rebel. You're not trying to be hesitant. You're not trying to stay in a place just because this is all you know. He wants you to understand why you're here. He wants you to understand who you are and he wants to understand where you're going next, okay? As an Israelite, as people of God. Now, we uh, did the last video about warning the nations about judgment. Nothing has changed. Judgment is coming to the nations. But Israel also needs to understand that judgment is coming to Israel in a different way, in a different place. Uh, Israel will be judged in the wilderness that we will be gathered to. Okay, so um, yes, we are leaving the places of captivity, but there will still be a judgment that takes place in the wilderness. And we'll get into that as we get further into the scriptures, okay? So once again, this is just another scripture to let us know why we're here, who we are, and where we're about to go next, okay? This is not our home. This is not Israel, okay? So let's go to the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verses 12 through 14 to find out more about the wilderness and what's going on. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 12 through 14. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness into her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. Hallelujah. So in the book of Revelation, the Father reveals to us that we are indeed going to the wilderness, okay? And we're going to be in the wilderness for three and a half years, okay? While we're in the wilderness, we will be protected from the serpent, the dragon, for that three and a half years. Now, the three and a half years is ex important because it explains an event. The Father is talking about the great tribulation that is to come. That is the time that the Antichrist will rule the entire world for three and a half years. Now, while the Antichrist is ruling the world for the three and a half years, Israel will be in the wilderness, a place prepared for us by the Most High Himself, a place where we will be safe during the time of great tribulation, okay? The woman here represents Israel. So Israel has been uh, forward an opportunity to be in a place of safety and provision while the rest of the world has to endure the great tribulation, okay? Now we're going to talk more about that. Revelation chapter 3, verses 7 through 11. It's the book of Revelation chapter 3, verse 7 through 11. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. And no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews, and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. You said to 12? That was a 10. Mm -hmm. Revelation, no. 3, 7 through 11. Okay, one more. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, so in this scripture, the Father is 
talking about the opportunity that we have that no man can take from us, which is the second exodus into the wilderness. This is for Israel and Israel alone. When I say Israel, that also includes the Gentiles who have been grafted into Israel, okay? Um, so yes, the Father has the key of David, and he has given us an opportunity that no one can take away from us. And this opportunity is to be in a place for three and a half years, which is the wilderness, while everybody else has to go through the great tribulation, okay? So, um, glory be to God for that, because we know the great tribulation is going to be a very, 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 very hard time. It's going to be difficult. We have the devil himself manifested in the flesh, ruling the entire world for three and a half years. Now, uh, Israel has already done their time, while the nations round about has prospered. Mm -hmm. So this is what people need to understand. While the nations round about have been living in ease and prosperity, Israel has been struggling because of the curse of the broken covenant. But now things are about to change for Israel. Israel is now about to be taken to a place of safety and a place that's been prepared for them, a place to nourish them, a place away from the serpent while the rest of the nations have to go through the great tribulation. So do you see how things have changed? The nations have been in prosperity and ease and having a good time while Israel's been down. Now Israel is about to get up while the nations have to go through the great tribulation. Okay, so that is the opportunity that has been given to Israel that no one else can have, nor can anyone take away from us. So glory be to God for that, that we do not have to go through the great tribulation. We don't have to go through that Israel. Now, he's also saying that um, this is, this letter is to the angel of the church of Philadelphia. We know that the church of Philadelphia was in Israel. Uh, I believe it was the tribe of Gad, which is on the east side of the Jordan River. So the church of Philadelphia is being referred to Israel. The father is talking to Israel in this scripture, okay? And you can go do your research on that about the tribes of Israel. And uh, Reuben, Gad, and half of the tribe of Manasseh, uh, they were allotted the east side of the <coughs> Jordan River where the church of Philadelphia was, okay? So we know that the father is talking to Israel. Now... Um, let's go to Ezekiel chapter 20 verses 32 through 38. This is the book of Ezekiel chapter 20 verse 32 through 38. Mm -hmm. okay. And that which cometh into your mind shall not be at all that ye say we will be as the heathen as the families of the countries to serve wood and stone. As I live, saith the Most High Yah, surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out will I rule over you. And I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the countries wherein ye are scattered with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people and there will I plead with you face to face. Like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so will I plead with you, saith the Most High God. And I will cause you to pass under the rod, and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. And I will purge out from among you the rebels, and them that transgress against me. I will bring them forth out of the country where they shall join, and they shall not enter the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Most High. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, so the Father is giving us more details about the wilderness and what's going on. And he even lets us know, uh, well, at least in my Bible, where it is. So, it says, what you have in mind is not will not be done to be like the nations all around you serving gods of wood and stone. So, the Father is saying, Israel, you're not about to be like these nations worshiping false gods. You're going to worship the one true living God, the living God the creator of heaven and earth, the God of Israel. You're not to be like the rest of these nations round about you, okay? So he's going to bring us into the wilderness of the people, into his desert judgment hall. And it says, I will judge you there and get rid of the rebels just as I did in the wilderness after I brought you out of Egypt. So the father is referring to a time that already happened, it will happen again. 
okay? When we left Egypt, we went into the wilderness. When we were in the wilderness, people were purged out. People were judged in the wilderness, okay? He's going to do the same thing here in our day and time when we go to the wilderness, okay? Israel will be judged. And after he judges Israel in the wilderness, whoever survives the purging, that will be the final remnant that will enter into the promised land after the three and a half year great tribulation for the millennial reign when the Messiah returns to take his place as king in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now it says, I will count you carefully and let only a small quota return. That is the remnant. And the others, the rebels and all those who sin against me, I will purge from among you. That is judgment on Israel. This is the purging that will take place in the wilderness. They shall not enter Israel, but I will bring them out of the countries where they are in exile. And when that happens, you will know I am the most high. So once again, the father is bringing all his people, Israel, out of the places they have been scattered. If you are alive and remain at the time of the exodus. And the reason why he's bringing all of his people out of the places of exile is to prove a point that he alone is God. And he is a, also a promise keeper. Okay. And he's bringing all Israel out because Israel has to be judged. And he's going to judge Israel in the wilderness. Our judgment is not the same judgment as the nations, nor will it take place in the same place as the nations. So the Father has very specific plans for his people. This is why Israel needs to wake up and tap in so they know what is about to happen, okay? We are going into the wilderness. There will be a judgment on Israel in the wilderness. If you survive the purging in the wilderness, you will enter into Israel as part of the remnant. If you do not survive the purging in the wilderness, you do not enter into Israel as part of the remnant. Okay? It says, the wilderness of the people is the Syro-Arabian deserts, people by nomadic tribes. So we're going into a desert place. But even though it's a desert, the Father is going to make it flourish with springs and pools and trees and fruit. That's why it says in Revelation, he has prepared a place for us. We're not going back to a barren desert. No, he's going to bring forth life in the desert that we travel to. It's going to be a miracle. And... Um, while we're there we'll be taken care of we will, ha we will have nourishment we will have food we will have water we will have shade we will have everything we need to survive in the in the wilderness just like they did uh when they left out of egypt the first time so the father has taken care of all provisions for us okay now um let's go further into it and go to Revelation chapter 20 verses 1 through 7. This is the book of Revelation chapter 20. Okay. You said verse 1 through 7? Yes, ma'am. All right. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahshua, and for the word of Yah and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of Yah and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Hallelujah. 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 Okay. You said to seven? Uh, yeah, one through seven. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan will be loosed out of his prison. Hallelujah. Okay, so the Father is once again revealing his plans, revealing his timeline. So we read in Ezekiel that there will be a purging in the wilderness. 
if you do not, if you're purged out, it says here in Revelation, once you've been purged out, you do not enter into Israel. So that means if you're purged, you do not get to join the millennial reign. You do not get to go to Jerusalem for the millennial reign, okay? You're purged out. You died as a rebel. You died sinning against the Most High. You do not get to inherit the millennial reign kingdom like those who survived the purging, okay? So if you survive the purging in the wilderness, you will be part of the remnant that enters into Israel for the millennial reign with Yasha, okay? If you're purged out in the wilderness, you do not get to enter into the millennial reign with Yasha, okay? Now, in Revelation here, it says, those who have been beheaded for their testimony about Yasha, for proclaiming the word of God, and who had not worshipped the creature or his statue, nor accepted his mark on their foreheads or their hands. They had come to life again, and now they reigned with Yasha for a thousand years. So, in Revelation, it talks about woe to the inhabitants of the earth, for Satan has come down and he's very angry. So they've been kicked out of the heavens. Satan comes to earth. When he comes to earth, he will rule the entire world for three and a half years. He will try to pursue Israel as they go into the wilderness, a place of safety. He will not be able to get Israel because of the protection of the Most High. So because he does not get to, it, get to Israel, he goes back to get the offspring of Israel, which is those who are in the great tribulation, but they do not take the mark of the beast. They will lay down their life for the Messiah. They will not take the mark. Those who are in the great tribulation and do not take the mark of the beast, but lay down their life, they will be resurrected at the return of the Messiah, the second coming, and they will get to partake in the millennial reign with the Messiah. This is what the scriptures say. This is the first resurrection so the father is still being merciful even during the time of great tribulation giving you one more chance one more chance to accept the most high as your savior it will be way more difficult than it is now yes you will have to lay down your life more than likely unless he has ordained you to survive that three and a half years which is highly unlikely Okay, so if you do not take the mark of the beast during the millennial reign and you lay down your life for Yasha, you will be resurrected at the second coming and you will be able to be in Jerusalem for the millennial reign, for the thousand year rulership with the Messiah. That is your reward. That is your reward for not taking the mark of the beast. You made it. You made it. But if you are Israel and you're in the wilderness and you get purged out, that is it. You do not get to come back to life for the millennial reign. You have to wait till after the thousand years for the judgment, okay? So the scriptures is making it clear according to your choice where you're going to end up, okay? If you survive the purging in the wilderness... You will be the remnant that enters the millennial reign with Yasha for a thousand years. You made it. If you're purged out of the wilderness, you didn't make it, you won't be able to enter into the millennial reign for the thousand years. You have to wait till after the thousand years and then comes the judgment. Okay? If you are in the great tribulation and do not take the mark of the beast and lay down your life, keep the commandments of God you will be resurrected at the second coming of Yahshua, will, which will occur after the three and a half year great tribulation, and you will be able to rule and reign with Yahshua as a priest in the millennial reign. Okay? This is the timeline. That is it. It is your choice. What you end up with, you can't blame nobody because it's your choice. Okay? The Father is calling all men to repent and to accept his son Yasha as their savior. That is the only way to be saved. Now Israel has special promises for them, like not being the ones going through the great tribulation because that's the promises of the father. Even though we broke our end of the deal, he did not break his. His promises still stand for Israel 
we serve a good God. We have a good father who is a, a, a promise keeper. So he's keeping his promises, even though we don't deserve it, Israel. So this is another reason to rejoice. We do not have to go through the great tribulation, but that does not mean you not going to get judged in the wilderness. There will be a judgment. There will be a purging in the wilderness for Israel, even though we don't have to go through the great tribulation. Okay. Um, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verses 1 through 12 to see why people were getting purged out of the wilderness and how to avoid getting purged out of the wilderness. This is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 1 through 12. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. But with many of them Yah was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples, to the intent we should not lust after evil things, as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them, as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let some of us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happened unto them for in samples, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the Father even points out some of the things that caused them to get purged out in the wilderness the first time. So he's letting us know, go back to the past to avoid the same thing in the future. Okay? So these are just some, some of the reasons why you will people will be getting purged out of the wilderness it says from this lesson we are warned that we must not desire evil things as they did nor worship idols as they did so don't be in the wilderness desiring evil things you need to get your heart right now you need to purge your heart now you need to kill the flesh now you need to consecrate yourself now this is what the father is telling israel to do consecrate yourself whatever is in you that is not of him we need to get rid of it we need to expose these things of darkness in us bring it to the throne of the father so he can help us so that way when we get in the wilderness it's not it's not tearing at our hearts it's not causing us to rebel against god it, it's not putting us in jeopardy to get purged out okay do not desire evil things do not worship idols don't be in the wilderness not worshiping the God that just brought you out of the places of captivity. Okay, you, you will get purged out. Um, another lesson is what happened when some of them sinned with other men's wives. If you dealing with lust and fornication and it's no self-control, you need to start working on these things now. You you can't be out there sleeping with other men's wives. That's what that's what they were doing. And they got purged out, okay? So you need to start working on self-control now. If, 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 you, if you have those urges, these are the things you need to recognize within yourself. Bring it to the Father so he can help you so that when you're in the wilderness, you're not looking or lusting after other people that already belong to somebody, okay? Um, and don't try the most high's patience. They did. And died from snake bites. Don't murmur against God. Don't get in the wilderness and start complaining. Why he bring us from America? I need my iPhone. Oh, I miss, you know, social media. That's going to get you purged out. Be, 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 <laughs> be thankful. Like, you don't even know what he just did. But you don't come on. Don't, don't, don't do that. Because that's going to get you purged in the wilderness. Longing for Babylon. When the father already told you this place is not your home, let the things of Babylon go because I'm about to take you back home. And when I take you back home, you can't bring Babylon with you. So you're going to have to make a choice. If you want Babylon, you can get purged with Babylon. If you want the most high, I can keep you and you can be part of my remnant. But the father is letting us know 
you have got to renew your mind you have got to let the ways of this world go this is not who we are israel this is not our home this is not our culture this is not our ways we have been programmed to be like the heathen we are not heathens okay so we have to deprogram ourselves with the word of god and return to him in spirit and in truth okay and it says uh all these, things, all these things happen to them as examples, as object lessons to us to warn us against doing the same things. Mm -hmm. So read the testimonies of what happened in the first exodus when they went into the wilderness. Learn from their mistakes and don't make the same mistakes because it will be the same results. You will be purged out, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, a few more scriptures. Let's, let's uh, read about what's, what the wilderness will be like. I know I've never been in the wilderness for no three and a half years. So the father is going to let us know some of the things that are going to be taking place in the wilderness. So you can try to prepare for that as much as you can. Um, Isaiah chapter 35 verses 1 through 10. Isaiah 35. Yes, verses 1 through 10. 1 through 10. And y'all forgive me of my serious face. I just looked at myself on some, dang, who you about to shoot? <laughs> forgive me, but I'm just, that's my focus face. All right, Isaiah chapter 35, verse 1 through 10. Okay, and the wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it. The excellency of Carmel and Sharon, they shall see the glory of the Alahayim and the excellency of our Yah. Strengthen ye the weak hands, and confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your Yah will come with vengeance, even Yah with a recompense, and he will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as in heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out and streams in the desert, and the parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water. In the habitation of dragons, where each lay, shall be grass with reeds and rushes. And an highway shall be there and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those the wayfaring men, though fools shall not err they in therein i'm sorry no lion shall be there nor any ravenous beast shall go up, up thereon it shall not be found there but the redeemed shall walk there and the ransomed of the alahayim shall return and come to zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads they shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away hallelujah even the wilderness and desert will rejoice in those days. The desert will blossom with flowers. Yes, there will be an abundance of flowers and singing and joy. Don't get twiddly dee on them. The deserts will become. I'm ready to go. The deserts will become as green as the Lebanon mountains, as lovely as Mount Caramel's pastures and Sharon's meadows. For the Most High will display His glory there. The excellency of our Father, Abba. With this news, bring cheer to all discouraged ones. Mm -hmm. Be encouraged, Israel. We're about to get out of here, Israel. Yes. Encourage those who are afraid. Tell them, be strong. Fear not, Hallelujah. for Ahia is coming to destroy our enemies. Hallelujah. He is coming to save us, y'all. And when he comes, he will open the eyes of the blind and unstop the ears of the deaf. The lame will leap up like a deer and those who could not speak will shout and sing. Springs will burst forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The parched ground will become a pool with springs of water in the thirsty land. Where desert jackals lived, there will be reeds and rushes. 
restoration those who are sick those who are lame those who cannot speak those who are deaf those who are oh, blind mama. restoration is coming mama hold mm -hmm. on that's mm -hmm. what i'm saying my our mother is about to be restored yes. the father has given us dreams in the wilderness the father will heal our wounds he will restore our failing health he will make things right he will Animal display wheelchairs people his who glory are there will be walking if you cannot speak you, you will, will be sing. talking it's going to be beautiful it's going to be Hold on. awesome and so, what did he say it just reminds me of the, the when the disciples were coming through with the messiah they was asking who sinned for this man to be born blind was it his parents or him and he was like none just for but the for glory. the glory of the most high and he just said his glory will be displayed so there's been a time where a lot of people have been lame or born on the spectrum, if you will, or born uh, deaf or blind. And the glory of the Most High will be shown in us, be shown in his people before the nations and before our very eyes to where it is going to be miraculously awesome. It's, it's unreal. So you stay encouraged, Israel. That's something for us to rejoice about. He literally is sowing seeds of joy. Joy, hope hope yes yeah, like Woo. it's 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 overwhelming to hear but it's so great someone's it's going so to great. save us somebody loves us somebody Hallelujah. cares enough about our condition to change it around for Hallelujah. us someone's going to heal us of our ailments what yes the father Hallelujah. our father the creator of heaven and earth the god of israel this is why he proclaims throughout scripture there's nobody like me, Israel. Hallelujah. There never was, and there never will be Hallelujah. no other God. I alone am He, mm -hmm. the great I am that I am. I am good, mm -hmm. even when you are not. Hallelujah. So the Father is saying, Israel, strengthen yourself. Hold on to the little strength you got. Mm -hmm. I know you've been through a lot. I punished you. But the time has come where restoration is coming to my people acknowledgement is coming to my people love prosperity is coming to my people no longer will you be to tell Israel but I had to punish you for your sin because I am a just God I am holy and this is why the father says obedience is better than sacrifice and you only have I known out of all the families of the face of the yes. earth therefore will I punish you he he really punished us like a parent like you playing at the park with a whole bunch of kids and y'all get in trouble and you try to tell on other kids and what does your parents say i don't care about them kids they don't live in my house they not my children i'm not worried about them i'm going to deal with you for what you did wrong and the most high was not slack at all he knocked us out he yeah. tore us up and he said that he would so again we see ourselves in this destroyed state we see ourselves in this downtrodden and 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 just completely unaware delusional state quite honestly but the father's bringing us out and over the years Israel we have been able to see that mm -hmm. even ourselves we're living witness living witnesses that the most high is a keeper of his promises he said he would pour out his spirit he said he would wake up he said we would begin to prophesy he said we would regather he said he would deliver he said he would redeem and he said he would pay back there's no need for us to lose hope now and it's so beautiful how he likens it unto the times that he did before. Again, when we left out of Egypt, it was a mixed multitude that came amongst us. Mm -hmm. When we left out of Egypt, he did not deal with us individually there. Everyone was brought out. And then they were dealt with in the wilderness. The wilderness is our special place with the Most High. It's, yeah. it's the purging ground. It's the proving ground for us. Yeah. And he, he, he wants to prove us to see if we're gonna keep his commandments or not because this captivity is unlike no other that means we will he, he promises we will not be able to sin against him again he will betroth us to himself in righteousness and faithfulness so that's where that final purging is coming from there will be if he if he didn't write about it then it wouldn't be but there are going to be rebels in the wilderness who will get purged out because they're going to want chicken they're going to want to come back to Egypt they're going to want to round up the elders and the leaders and say let's go back let's plan to go back we're thirsty is the most high really with us why we got to come out here what about the what about the bitter waters what about is he really only speaking about you what's hurt. going on how come he only giving us man a oh, man I'm sick of dealing with that he told us to stay in for the Shabbat guess what they went out a gathering mm -hmm. if you are not already spiritually exercised in these things in obedience to the most high it is going to be extremely difficult for you to be outside away from your comfort zone and you are now having to be confronted with 
what the Most High told you to be dealing with while we were here. I'm your provider. I'm the one that provides for you. So you don't have to long for something else when you know I'm providing for you. I told you this place is prepared for you, all ready for you to receive nourishment and you to know that I am him who is who brought you out of all of this. So like sis said, like the scriptures are saying, these things were for our examples so that we don't commit the same idolatries and atrocities so that we don't provoke Yah the way that we did in the wilderness. He said they provoked me these 10 times, Moses. There was plenty of purging in the wilderness. Moshe came down from the uh, 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 mountain with the Ten Commandments and we had already broken all. He split up. He said, who's on the most high side? Who's not? And they were slaughtered off. The ones who were rebellious had to, he had to make the brazen serpent. And they had to be spared by looking upon the serpent. There was many purgings in the wilderness, so the father doesn't change. He said it's going to happen again, but he will bring us all out from here just to deal with us in that wilderness, the place he always dealt with his people. So it's a special, special thing, but it's also a very intense and serious time to take heed to what the Most High is saying. That's what I'm saying. I... I'm sorry. We have already decided. If anybody want to complain and murmur in the will, I'm out. I'll pick up my tent so quick and go to a whole different place because I refuse to have the earth swallow me up, Cora. Uh, and my whole tent and my whole house. No. We got to get right with the most high. Make sure your heart and your mind is set to obey. Got Absolutely. It. No, you good. Um, so yeah, so the wilderness is going to be turned into a, just a beautiful oasis. It's going to be a lot of flowers, it's going to be a lot of beautiful fruit trees and, you know, rivers and ponds. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be taken care of mm -hmm. in this wilderness. The Father got us. Even in our wickedness, He took care of us. Hallelujah. So in His pleasure, He's going to take care of us even more. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, Israel, stay encouraged, man. Um, this, this, this is the last test for Israel. You got to pass under that rod in the wilderness. Once you make it, once you survive the Persian in the wilderness, you good to go. He said, you don't have to worry about the second death. You've already been approved. You're entering into the millennial reign where there is no sin. Mm -hmm. So you're good to go. You can look forward to the millennial reign and then the new Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. You can, you can literally let your hair down after the purging in the wilderness. That's the last test for Israel. Mm -hmm. Survive the purge. Those who endure to the end shall be saved. You've got to survive that purging mm -hmm. in the wilderness. So start purging yourself now so that you won't get purged mm -hmm. in the wilderness. Because what did he say? He said, I will cause you to pass under the rod of, of inspection. inspection. We're going to be inspected, Israel. Mm -hmm. Just like, a, and that's what, it was so beautiful because I started... You know, knowing that the Most High is a shepherd, they always had a staff or a rod for protection and also to inspect their sheep. So if another sheep would come in of their pasture that it belonged to them, there was usually a mark or some kind of signal on the lamb to let the shepherd know, okay, that, that belongs to Mr. Uh, 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 Yawada. You know what I'm saying? That belongs to Mr. You see what I'm saying? So I, they would return what was not theirs, what had strayed away and what was lost. So the, the Messiah is saying the same thing. I'm going to take that, the shepherd's rod and inspect to see who's mine. Inspect to see who has my mark. Mm -hmm. Inspect to see who is blemish free. Inspect to see who is worthy of who's being sick. Come who's, on. Who's Thank you. If you got a little who's unforgiveness good. on you, you still got stench on you from sin. You still got things on mm -hmm. you. You're going to be put to the side. You will be thoroughly inspected by the Messiah because he said no, no fool. No, 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 no one who is in error will go on this highway of holiness. It will only be that righteous remnant that he will bring into the land. He will allow to come back into the land. So if that is your heart's desire, if you want to fully rejoice, that's why my prayers go deep. Not only that we endure until the end, not only that we're caught, uh, uh, found worthy to escape from all the things that are coming upon the face of the earth, but that we're worthy to make it to the wilderness and that we're worthy to pass under the rod of inspection and that we're worthy to make it onto that highway of holiness and that we're worthy to make it into the land. You've got to be able to see your faith fulfilled. That's what he means to believe. We're walking by faith we don't see it yet, but we believe that he will take us all the way there. What we believe, we will have it manifested by the most high. It will come to pass. So pray for that. Pray what your heart desires. I desire to be in the land with the Messiah. I desire to be accounted worthy, to be a part of that remnant. Pray and then do. And for you modern day Pharisees and Sadducees, uh, 
not looking too good. Y'all y'all need to get y'all hot right. Get all that hatred out of your heart because you will not be allowed to enter into Jerusalem with all that build up in your heart, mm -hmm. with all that darkness and hatred in your heart. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because he said he who hates his brother is a murderer. And we know that in no wise shall any murderers inherit the kingdom. That's why I remove the hatred. Let the most high recompense them. Let the most high pay vengeance back on our enemies. Because he can get us in a way, he can get them in a way nobody can. Look how he got us. Mm -hmm. He already told you what he's going to do to him. So you need to release that. Let that go. Let, it, Let go. it go because it hurts you. What do he say? Envy rots the bones. Hatred Jealousy, and nagging. It, it does things to us. It destroys you spiritually Just like and he, manifests come physically. On. Because what you sow in the flesh reaps in your flesh. That's why he You're said dark. Well, a man's speech reveals in what's in his heart. The Father wants you to have a pure heart and clean hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get rid of that hatred. Learn how to forgive. Learn how to let go and let God. He literally makes it easy for us. We don't have to do anything. The Father's going to do everything. Hallelujah. Even when it comes to recompense. We don't have to we don't have to worry about that. We just have to focus on him. Okay? The Father searches the hearts. He knows who belongs to Him. He knows out of each nation who He chose for Himself. Nobody can fool Him. So He's going to make the right judgment for each and every individual, giving them exactly what they deserve because He knows deep down the intentions of the heart. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's an honest judge, mm -hmm. and He is trustworthy and true. He can be trusted in His judgments. Mm -hmm. He is not going to let somebody undeserving inherit the kingdom. It's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Everybody who inherit the kingdom is because they deserve it. Okay? A um, few more scriptures, guys. Let, let's go to Isaiah 43, 13 through 21. What else is it going to be like in the world? Hmm. Isaiah 43, 14 through 21. 13 through 21. Excuse me. Yea, before the day, before the day was, I am he, and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work, and who shall let it? Thus saith the Allahim, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Yasharala. For your sake I have sent to Babylon, and have brought down all their nobles, and the Chaldeans, whose cry is in the ships. I am the Alahayim, your Holy One, the Creator of Yasharala, your King. Thus saith the Alahayim, which maketh a way in the sea, and a path in the mighty waters, which bringeth forth the chariot and horse, the army and the power. They shall lie down together, they shall not rise. They are extinct, they are quenched as tow. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. You said to 21? Yes, sir. The beast of the field shall honor me, the dragons and the owls, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. This people have I formed for myself. They shall shew forth my praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My goodness. It says, but forget all that. It is nothing compared to what I'm going to do. He's talking about Egypt. Them walking through. He said, forget all that. It is nothing compared to what I'm going to do. For I'm going to do a brand new thing. See, I have already begun. Don't you see it? I will make a road through the wilderness of the world for my people to go home and create rivers for them in the desert. The wild animals in the fields will thank me, the jackals and ostriches too, for giving them water in the wilderness. Yes, springs in the desert. The father is saying, yes, I'm going to make water come up in the desert. Picture the desert. It's just sand. It's just barren wilderness. It's just nothing there. Look it but up. But he's going to traverse it. He's going to make a life literally come up Good. in the desert. You Guys, y'all can look this up. This has already started happening. It's it happening. is leaving scientists perplexed. They literally are saying there's waters showing up, springs of water that are just pouring out, gushing out of the desert. And of course, scientists are running to try to figure it out, but they have no clue. They have no explanation. It's You're not right going here. to have one. Is that is the most high? 
So, but guys, when you hear these things, look out into the world. They're really happening. The father is already, or it, look at the Baltimore Pier. Everything. The Euphrates didn't dry. Everything. The, this is the, we're seeing the father orchestrate Hallelujah. and move things into place for our good. This is literally what we're seeing. These events that are happening are not by coincidence. It's the father orchestrating everything. It says, don't you see it? I have already begun. He's mm -hmm. already making a way. He's already sent the rain. So by the time we get to the wilderness, I mean the fruit trees, the, the trees are just going to, the fruit's going to be hanging, ready to be picked. I'm so hyped. He already has a place prepared for us. So that means when we get there, it's prepared. We don't have to worry about nothing. Amen. We can just praise him and rejoice Amen. and sing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, Israel. Hallelujah. We almost there. I know you're tired. I'm tired. I know. But we almost there. Rejoice the Father God as we are leaving these places of captivity. And we're going to a place of safety away from the face of the serpent. Hallelujah. A place prepared for us. It's going to be smelling good out there. All the flowers, <laughs> the water, fresh water. Not Lord. this tainted water. Lord. Reverse osmosis water. Fresh water. water. Fresh water. Okay? We're going to be with our people. We're going to be with our God. Hallelujah. Nobody bothering us. Hallelujah. Nobody trying to come and break up the feast days. Hallelujah. Nobody looking at us with a side no, eye or a hatred in their heart. Hallelujah. None of that, y'all. We Lord. going back. Now, it's going to be rebels amongst us still because that's what the scripture said. But it ain't going to be like nothing compared to what we've been experiencing Hallelujah. all this time, y'all. So, we're going to, people are going to be getting healed. Restoration. Okay. It's going to be lovely yes, in the wilderness. Yes, but make sure you examine yourself now in honesty and in truth. And whatever you see in you, bring it to the Father. Be honest. Be humble. And just bring it to the Father and let him help you. Okay? Be obedient. Keep his Shabbat. Please. The Father keeps making it a point that he's holy. He's trying to let you know I'm not like man. I am a hundred and ten percent all spirit, almighty God. There is no darkness in me. So when I say I hate sin and I will punish sin, he's dead serious. He bruised his own son. He punished his own people, Israel. Spare not the angels. It, it, angels. The Father is not playing when it comes to righteousness. He's not going to be judging you like man because he's not a man, okay? He's a spirit being. So he's not going to be moved by your little face or your tears. He's going to do just judgment. So don't think you can break the laws of God. And for some reason, you're just so special, he's going to let you slide. You're deceiving yourself. It says the heart is the most deceitful, the most wicked. Don't deceive yourself in thinking that you're too good to be judged okay. righteously. He's not going, he's, stop playing with the most high. It says in the scripture, blessed is the man who refuses to work. Say no on the Shabbat. No, I can't do it. It's a seal and a sign. It's a holy day. It's a day set apart. A day to be sanctified. A day to rest from your weekly labors. The Sabbath was made for man, not man for Sabbath. That means don't be making your plans on his Shabbat day. Do what thus saith the Most High. Be sanctified by him. Rest on his day. Mm -hmm. Stop working on the Shabbat. You need to read the scriptures because clearly you don't have enough faith because you would say no. You would, you would refuse to work like the scriptures say because I will be blessed if I refuse this day of work. The only day that they offer you more. Hey, can you work? Can you work on Saturday? We got overtime. I refuse. I can't do it. Mm -hmm. Let your yes be yes. Your no, but you don't even have to explain. I can't do it. Uh, 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 we got a bonus if you can work. Saturday. I cannot do it. You got me six days of the week. This day, I cannot do it. Uh, well, you, 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 your, doc, your job can be in jeopardy. I can't do it. The father got me. He been providing me. He gave me this job. He going to give me a next job. You got to have that much faith. You got to have that much faith to know the Father is going to bless you and take care of you as long as you're obedient. But when you rebel against the Most High and start doing your own thing on His day, that's when things start 
turning in your life. Things become overwhelming. Things start piling up. Now, now you're adding more on your plate than it has to be because you want to rebel. You don't want to keep the Shabbats. You don't want to keep the commandments. Mm -hmm. Do what thus says the Most High. Mm -hmm. And again, when they left out of Egypt, I'm sure during slavery and hard bondage, they weren't keeping the Shabbat. But when they came into the wilderness, they were told to keep the Shabbat. So again, knowing he doesn't change, we'll have to prove and, prove, you know, be proven uh, for our faith and for our obedience in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it makes sense that we're in training now mm -hmm. so that we don't get purged out in the wilderness. So thank the most high for the opportunity, but take advantage of it fully and positively for you and your family. Um, let's go to Hosea chapter 2, 14 through 20 real quick. Okay. Okay, two more. Okay, Hosea, 2. Hosea chapter 2, verse 14 through 20. 14 through 20. Therefore, behold, I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness and speak comfortably unto her. And I will give her her vineyards from thence, and the valley of Accor for a door of hope. And she shall sing there, as in the days of her youth, and as in the day when she came up out of the land of Egypt. And it shall be at that day, saith the Most High Yah, that thou shalt call me Ishi, and shalt call me no more Baali. For I will take away the names of Balaam out of her mouth, and they shall no more be remembered by their name. And in that day will I make a covenant for them with the beasts of the field, and with the fowls of heaven, and with the creeping things of the ground. Hallelujah. And I will break the bow and the sword and the battle out of the earth, and will make them to lie down safely. And I will betroth thee unto me forever. Yea, I will betroth thee unto me in righteousness and in judgment and in loving kindness and in mercies. I will even betroth thee unto me in faithfulness, and thou shalt know the Allahim. And it shall come to pass in that day I will hear, saith the Allahim, I will hear the heavens, and they shall hear the earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the Father says, There in the wilderness I will give back her vineyards to her, and transform her valley of troubles into a door of hope. She will respond to me there, singing with joy, as in the days long ago in her youth, after I had freed her from captivity in Egypt. And then it also says, At that time I will make a treaty between you and the wild animals, birds, and snakes, not to fear each other anymore, and I will destroy all weapons, and all wars will end. So you ain't got to worry about being afraid of no bugs or no animals in the wilderness because he's going to make a covenant. We'll make a treaty between us and the animals just like in the beginning mm -hmm. we were not afraid of the animals and um so that's that's one major key that you don't have to worry about because i know it's certain animals and stuff that we might be afraid of because of the curse but that's going to be no more mm -hmm. we're going to be in union with mm -hmm. the animals and also this is encouragement for me that to help stop the bickering amongst Israel about the discrepancies, if you will, or for the things that we may not all agree on yet, such as the name. name. The Most High will do it. We're just trying to do the best that we can. We're just trying to do the best that we can to show ourselves approved unto the Most High. Mm -hmm. Not to any man, not to anybody uh, 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 that we feel like is important or anybody that I'm sure you guys feel like is important. I'm sure that that's not the heart's intention. So the Father shows us comfort here to say, listen, I'm going to remove those names. I'm going to remove all these uh, 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 false idols and names y'all used to call me that wasn't really my name. He's going to do all that. I'm going to restore the language. I will give you back your pure tongue. When you get into the land and y'all fully restored and you understand, then will I accept We're your sacrifices. The real then things. will I uh, set up your tent. Then will things are going to, it's okay that we don't know now. That's what he said. It, it, it has not yet appeared what we shall be. But when we are seen of, when he comes, we shall know him as we are known of him. Mm -hmm. We're going to know everything in its fullness. It's okay that you don't know a lot now. It's okay that you don't have it all the way together. The Holy Spirit, the Ruach is working those things out, bringing us into all truth. But once we, again, like he said, in the wilderness, in the land, once the Most High begins to work with us, begins to work on his people, we're not going to have no, we're going to be all on one accord, 
all praising and lifting up the same name, all calling him husband and not uh, uh, all keeping you know the same feast day. At thank the same you. At the time. same appointed time, that's what it means when he says full restoration. Mm -hmm. That's what we're coming back to. Israel, it's okay. It's okay. Some folks, Yahuwah, Yahusha, some folks, Yahawasha, some folks, Yasha, Yeshaya. It's okay. It's okay. The Most High will get us the to name. where we need to be. Just like the feast days. Do the best that you can according to scripture. You Thank you. Yeah. Put your heart into it. He's going to see your intentions at the end of the day Hallelujah. and know that you're trying to serve him the best way you can. Hallelujah. So, um, yeah, we got we to gotta relax when it comes to you know, people's differences. We have to learn how to embrace people's differences as long as it doesn't violate the gospel or the commandments. And we have to just love people where they are. We, we're not perfect. We don't know everything that will come during the time of restoration. So yeah, that's a good scripture to point out. Everything will be restored the way it's supposed to be by the hand of the Most High. No man can do it. Because that's, that's heavy in my spirit. It's a lot of things going on within Israel. And the enemy will use Arguing. these distractions. It's okay, Israel. Because. We all trying to do the best that we can as well. When we first did the Passover... <laughs> that's all i got to say is a chuckle <laughs> but the most high will begin to he'll bring you into these things into understanding into the it's, it's again it's it's a difference between knowing and understanding something mm -hmm. so when we fully get the understanding of what the father's doing he'll bring us into that fully restored where there's no question questioning we're all on one accord and it's a beautiful thing we'll see it through his eyes hallelujah come on okay okay <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, two more scriptures. Isaiah 34 through 16. What? Isaiah 34, 16. Okay, Isaiah. 34 and 16, and the Bible reads, Seek ye out of the book of the Allahim and read. No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. For my mouth it hath commanded. And his spirit, it hath gathered them. Hallelujah. Simple as that. It wow. says, search the book of the Most High. Yeah. Search the book of the Most High. This is not white man's book. This is the book of the Most High. Mm. Search the book of the Most High and see all that he will do. Not one detail will he miss. Come on. Not one kite will be there without a mate. For the Most High has said it. Hallelujah. And his spirit will make it come true. Hallelujah. His spirit will make it come true. Search the book of the Most High. That means you got to spend time in his word. Because he will reveal things to you. And by his spirit, he will lead you into all truth. But the Father's plans is in his book. Okay? Now, uh, last scripture. Isaiah 8, 17 through 19. I just don't know. That's mm -hmm, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Isaiah chapter 8, verses 17 through 19. Mm -hmm. And I will wait upon the Elohim that hideth his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him. Behold, I and the children whom the Elohim hath given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Elohim of hosts, which dwelleth in Mount Zion. And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep, and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their Yah for the living to the dead? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So in a nutshell, this is how we're going to end the teaching today. What is the plans of the Most High? A higher will save his people, a remnant shall return, and our enemies will soon be destroyed. Okay? Hallelujah. All praises to the Most High. Israel, get ready to leave your places of captivity and enter into the wilderness. But all is not done yet. There will be a purging. There will be a judgment in the wilderness mm -hmm. for Israel. So get your heart, mind, soul, body, flesh right. Okay? Mm -hmm. Also, one last thing about last video. Now, we know that we said that the is going to be a sign. But also, because I don't want it to be any confusion. 
yes, it's a sign. The eclipse is not the judgment of the Most High. It's a sign from the Most High. But that doesn't mean that people won't take advantage and still try to do some crazy type stuff when there's a duration of darkness upon this land. So just think about it. Somebody will point a gun in your face in broad daylight. Imagine what they could possibly possibly Come capitalize on. on when there's darkness or when there's... Uh, um, fear or caution in the land so be cautious and use wisdom in that regard in that perspective but know that this is a sign that judgment is coming up so this eclipse that we're going to see is not the actual judgment from the most high but that doesn't mean to say that things won't go on upon the face of the earth i'm sure that we'll be looting i'm sure that we'll be rioting i'm sure people are probably going to be uh robbing and there might be murders i'm sure there might be some kind of uh, uh backed up traffic you uh, even, though, it, even, even the government is trying to to, yeah, be to unleash some stuff so just they be supposed safe. to be shooting be missiles safe, at the moment use wisdom like sis said i'm not even gonna be outside thank you so it's it's just it's high alert it's high time alert. to be high on alert. high alert it's time alert. to be watchful and moving Frail. by the spirit moving in the spirit and again yes this is a time of caution so you should be seeking the father with all your with all with all you're getting come on Seek him and get understanding and let him let you know what he has for the times and let us guide us all so that we make it. We see each other again in the wilderness in that place of safety. All right, guys. So y'all stay encouraged and the most high willing uh, will be back before you with another video if he wills it. Um, we pray that you guys are uh, encouraged and that you find a way through the most high to endure this thing. Endure this thing, this, this, this last final part that's coming up. Find a way to endure. Stay strong, brothers and sisters, and keep Bad. us lifted in prayer. And we will keep you guys lifted in prayer. Until the Most High bring us back together again, you guys be blessed. Shalom.